All right, hello. Today's presentation will be called Moles 3. It is the third presentation in a series on helping us understand the mole. In the first presentation, I want to remind you that we looked at the introduction, what is the mole, what is Avogadro's number, and how do we utilize what we call the line method or fractional method of conversion. Please, I want to remind you that when we convert, we typically go from one expression or unit to another. If I have 12 eggs, I have a dozen. If I have a dozen eggs, I have 12. In each case, I'm talking about the same thing in a slightly different way. In the second presentation, we looked at the relationships utilizing, utilizing the line method or the fractional method. We examined the relationship between the number of atoms and how many moles we had or, or how many moles of something we have compared to how many atoms. We looked at molar mass, how to calculate it. We looked at the relationship between molar mass and the mole. We utilized the fractional or line method. In today's presentation, we're going to continue to utilize the fractional and line method, and we're going to continue to look at relationships. The relationship that we're going to examine this morning, right off the bat, is we're going to look at the mole, okay, compared to volume. Now, understand, we are going to be talking today, right now, about gases. We're not going to be talking about solids. We're going to be talking about the relationship between the mole and the volume of a gas. We begin with something called Avogadro's Hypotheses. Avogadro's Hypotheses states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure have the same number of particles. Now, I mentioned that representative species, representative particles. This is terminology that we've used in this unit. If you don't remember that terminology, please go back to the first um, lecture. Let's read it again. Avogadro's hypothesis states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure have the same number of particles. All right, so this means that we need to understand something called STP. S meaning standard, T meaning temperature, and P meaning pressure, STP. All right, now please don't get intimidated or hung up with the zero degrees Celsius or the 101.3 kilopascals or one atmosphere. Okay, that's a pressure. You understand high pressure and low pressure. That's atmospheric pressure. These values right here, okay, create a standard. They, in other words, an apples to apples comparison. If we're gonna compare these gases, we're going to compare them at STP. In other words, we make the conditions the same so that it's an apples to apples and not an apples to orange comparison. So at STP, this is what we learn. So at STP, okay, standard temperature and pressure, one mole of a gas, and it makes no difference what kind of gas it is, okay, one mole of any gas is going to occupy a volume of 22.4 liters or 22.4 capital L. In other words, this gives us some information that we can use to our advantage. All right, one mole of a gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. That's, and you know that volume is defined as the amount of space that an object takes up. So what does this really give us? Well, as you know, as we have utilized what we call the fractional method and as we utilize conversions and as we learn about the mole, right, We've been using these fractions, and, and in each case so far, you've also noticed that the fractions can be flipped, all right? So here you have 22.4 liters over one mole, okay? Because one mole would be 22.4 liters at STP. Or one mole would be 22.4 liters. Okay, both of these fractions are equal to one, and both of these fractions are essentially saying the same thing. You just have a different unit in the numerator. You have liters in the numerator, moles in the denominator, moles in the numerator, liters in the denominator. Now, what does this enable us to do? Well, as you know, utilizing the line method or the fractional method, we always put the unit in the numerator that we are converting to. We always have the unit in the denominator that we are wishing to convert from because we need for them, think about cross multiplication, we need for them to cancel out, okay? So liters would be in here, right? So that they could cancel out. All right, so 
Let's look at a problem. I think this will make more sense if we look at a problem. So the problem says that sulfur dioxide is a gas produced by burning coal. It is an air pollutant and one of the causes of acid rain. Well, being the wise consumer that you are, you already notice that's nice to know that, but that's kind of fluff. What do you really want to know? Determine the volume in liters of 0 0.60 moles of sulfur dioxide gas at STP. So we know it's at STP, good. Well, then that tells us that we may utilize freely these conversion factors if we need to. What are we being asked to find? Well, we read the problem very diligently and we find out that we're being asked to find volume. Well, the, the unit for volume is liters, okay? Now, we examine what are we given? Well, we are given 0 0.60 moles of SO2 gas. So we know that we have a little over half a mole. Now, my friends, you have my full permission, as I always state, to use some modicum of common sense. If one mole occupies 22.4 liters, you don't even have a mole here. You have just barely over half a mole. Common sense tells you that your answer is going to be less than 22.4. Now, sometimes people don't think about what they're doing before they do it, they just jump in. Think about what you're doing as you go along, and I think it'll all make more sense. All right, so we know what we're given, okay? And we know what we want. We want to find the volume of 0 0.60 moles of SO2 gas at STP. So we take what we're given and we always put that over one. And I'm afraid I sometimes kind of get in the habit of probably not putting that over one. All right, later I do. Um, but at some point, I don't know as I really care. Understand, this is what I'm given over one. Then what do I do? Well, I multiply it times what? Times 22.4 liters over one mole. Now, how did I know which one of these to choose? I knew which one to choose because I always want what I'm converting to in the numerator, and I always want what I'm converting from, right, in the denominator. So, in this case, I have to have moles in the denominator. Now, honestly, guys, I probably since we're talking about SO2 gas, I probably should have went ahead and written liters SO2, moles SO2, okay? I did not, but understand, what are we talking about? We're talking about sulfur dioxide gas, all right? So slow down, look at the problem, and think about what we're doing. We're going to convert from moles of SO2 to liters of SO2. These will cancel out. So moles of SO2 will cancel out with moles of SO2. And then what will I do? Well, I will simply do simple math. I will multiply my two numerators. So I will multiply 0 0.60 moles of SO2 times 22.4 liters. Well, that's exactly what I had set up right here. Agreed? Now I will simply perform that mathematical function and I get an answer of 13.44 liters of sulfur dioxide. However, I will consider sig figs. And I will have to admit, and I apologize, sometimes I kind of get to where I don't think about sig figs like I probably should. Um, but in this particular case, it's a multiplication. So I'm going to go with my least number. So I have two significant figures here. So my answer has two significant figures, all right? 13 liters of SO2. Now, as I have said and stated multiple uh, times, you can rewind this and listen to it again. You can look at it again if you need to. Don't hesitate to do that to help yourself understand how we do these problems. But in this particular case, this is how we would do this initial problem. Let's continue. So let's change it around a little bit. Rather than giving you moles, and asking for volume, okay? Why don't I give you volume and ask you for moles? Well, you're like, oh, 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 I know I can do that. I know I can do that because I can flip my conversion factors. Yes, you can. All right, so 
we know what we're given because I didn't really give you any fluff here. I just simply gave you the value. I gave you volume of SO2 this time, and I want you to tell me how many moles. So you're like, well, uh, that's gonna go over one, okay? That's gonna be my first, that's my given, that's my first fraction. And I'm gonna multiply by what I want over what I wanna get rid of, okay? That's how I state it, what I want over what I wanna get rid of. Well, this one's gonna end up being a pretty simple problem. And once again, I probably should have put moles of SO2 and liters of SO2 because you can't forget what we're talking about, all right? But in this particular case, the liters of SO2 will cancel out. But in this case, you have this in the denominator, denominator, so you're going to have to divide. Well, this one works out pretty simply to three moles of SO2, okay? All right, so that one is a pretty simple problem. But what do you learn to do? You learn to use either one of these conversion factors, assuming that your gas is at STP. And if you assume that your gas is at STP, then each gas at STP will occupy a space of 22.4 liters. So what are we examining in this first batch of problems? We're examining the relationship between moles and volumes, or volume, okay? One mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters, okay? All right, now let's examine in the next part of this particular lecture, and it will be the last item that we'll look at, uh, at least in this lecture, let's examine the relationship between molar mass density, but once again, let's continue to look at gases, okay? Now, you know how to calculate molar mass, and you know about density from work that you did in a previous trimester. Okay, gases can have different densities. A gas-filled balloon will either sink or rise in the air depending upon the density of the gas in the balloon. Now, first of all, you know, you already know this. You know the density is mass per unit volume. This is the calculation for density. You did a lab uh, on calculating density. But in my classroom, and you may not have had me for a previous trimester, I like to show a video about noble gases because noble gases are gases, as you know, and they have different densities. And I think this fellow does a wonderful job of showing that. So let's watch this video together. Let's make sure we have enough volume here. Here are five of the six noble gases. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon. They're all colorless and transparent. Krypton and xenon form compounds only with difficulty. Helium, neon, and argon don't form compounds at all. As we descend the group in the periodic table, the atomic number and the relative atomic mass increases. The gases get denser. Helium, helium is lighter than air. Neon, is just lighter. Argon and krypton, I've just got to unstick these from the anchorage for a moment. Argon and krypton are both heavier than air. And xenon, xenon is the heaviest of the lot. You've heard of a lead balloon? Well, this is it. I really enjoy that video. I love the way he says Zenon. Uh, but there at the end, you could hear the balloon hit. It, it hit with actually with a pretty good thud. And so it was obviously much more dense than air. So the idea that gases have different densities, he just proved that to us by utilizing some of the most famous gases we know of called the noble gases. All right. So once again, they have different densities, which is mass per unit volume. Now, do not lose sight of what I told you we are going to do. We are going to make a comparison between molar mass and density, 
all right? And you already know how to calculate molar mass and you understand what density is. All right, so here we go. So let's, let's, let's assume that you understand density and you know that density is mass per unit volume. So you're going to have to have a unit for density and you know that in this case, it's going to be grams per liter. Grams would be your unit for mass, liters would be your unit for volume. Now, if I know density and I know molar volume at STP, okay, and we just covered that just a second ago, we know that if I'm at STP, one mole takes up a space of 22.4 liters, okay, then I can calculate molar mass. So if I know some of these items, I can calculate what I do not know. Doing what? Utilizing the fractional method. Utilizing a little bit of simple math. And so we're just continuing to do what we have been doing. We're just examining a slightly different relationship. So if you recall from just a few minutes ago, if I had 22.4 liters over one mole, well, what else would I have? Well, I hope at this point in time you instantly, you know, you instantly say, well, Mr. Day, if I needed to, I could flip those. It's the same fraction. It's equal to one. So if I needed to, I could have 22.4 liters over one mole, or I could have one mole over 22.4 liters. No big deal. And the answer to that would be yes. Okay? So let's look at one of these problems. Except on this problem, I'm kind of getting to the point to where I think you can do simple math. And I think we can review sig fig rules together. I've probably not paid as much attention to sig figs at the beginning as I should have, but, but at the same time, we can review those rules together. But if the density of a gaseous compound containing carbon and oxygen, so you really don't even know what it is, okay, is found to be 1.94 grams per liter at STP, okay? So this is the density of the gas that they're talking about. But they want you to find the molar mass, all right? So you know that molar mass is going to be expressed in grams, correct? So a little bit of common sense tells you which one of these units do you need to get rid of? And this is where you've always got to be a thinker. You've got to be thinking about what you're trying to accomplish. If I give you density, which is mass per unit volume, all right, but I only want to know mass, then common sense tells you you've got to get rid of this L, okay? So you think about this, if nothing else, think about it from the standpoint of units. Continue to think about this fractional method, this line method, as what you want over what you want to get rid of. Well, you want grams per mole to be your final answer because you've been asked to find what? Molar mass. Well, if you don't remember molar mass, go back to your second presentation and review how to calculate and how to find molar mass. But we're gonna want grams per mole, not grams per liter. So this liter has got to go. Well, the only way that's gonna happen is if we set up an opposing fraction that would enable liters to cancel out. Then what would I be left with? I would be left with grams per mole, all right? So I would need to have liters per mole as my opposing fraction. Well, kind of go back and think about this, and I guess I could take you all the way back to uh, this one right here. So you're gonna utilize, once again, one of these fractions. Now, the interesting thing about this problem is I didn't even do the math with you, okay? I did not set it up and do the math because I think that you're capable of choosing the correct fraction. And at this point, I think you're capable of doing the math and then just considering, you know, your sig fig rules. But if you remember molar mass, okay, molar mass, it was molar mass per mole or mole per molar mass. Okay, remember, this goes back all the way to the idea of molar mass. And once again, if you don't remember molar mass, go back and review it. But think about what you're being asked to do here. Think about what you're being asked to find. Think about what you're given and think about how you need to manipulate your units in order to find grams per mole.
okay? Now, what's the point? Well, here it is, and please listen without shutting this down because you're gonna have to use your thinkers, okay? This is something that you're gonna have to wrap your mind around. You're gonna have to wrap your mind around the fact that you're being asked to do conversions, that you're being asked to express something in a different way, that whatever you're given is not what you're going to end with. So how am I gonna set my problem up in order to get the unit that I would like to have at the end? The unit that you want is always going to be in the numerator of your multiplying fraction, and what you're striving to get rid of um, is, is typically going to be in the denominator. Now, this was a little bit of a different deal because you already had grams per liter, and, but you still wanted grams to stay in the numerator. So consider what you're doing here, okay? And consider what you want. The point is, is that you may use the fractional method of conversion to examine these relationships. Just don't forget that at the end of the day, you're still talking about the same thing, all right? And we will do practice problems together. One lecture isn't gonna make you an expert on anything, but watch, rewatch if you need to, and think about what you're doing.